Last time, I showed you how we're capable of producing $250,000 of product every month out of this 600 square foot shop. Today, I'm going to be doing a full size batch and answer many of the questions you asked in the last video. If you're new here, stick around because by the end, you're gonna see how a tiny automated factory like this is scalable to a real business. Let's go. The first step is ensuring that the batch mixer is clean. So we're gonna take a look at it. And that's what it looks like when it's cleaning. The next step is to add filtered water. We got a gauge right here that'll tell us exactly how many gallons of water we've added to the batch. It's important that the water is softened and filtered because this will remove all the minerals to ensure maximum shelf life for the products. Depending on the product we're making, each will use a different amount of water. You can see right there, that's our negative pressure system. That's a filtered negative pressure system that goes outside. The next step is adding some liquid ingredients. And for that, we're gonna use the drum pump. Hit this switch and it starts filling. More ingredients just mixed together. Final ingredients. Now I can't go over all the ingredients in the recipe. It's trade secret and that's what allows us to outperform a lot of leading brands. Now we're gonna take a quality control sample and test this. We'll then take that sample and grab a molded piece of vinyl covered in mold and mildew and dunk it in there and then set it down for three to five minutes. And here is our quality control. We know that the product's gonna perform the way it's supposed to and we'll get ready to start production. A lot of people have asked, why do we label the bottles first? With the bottles being empty, they're lighter and easier to manipulate. And the way that the labeler setup's configured, it just works better. The next question that was asked in the comments, why do we label the bottle on its side? This labeler was originally a semi-automatic labeler that I converted into a full auto with Arduino. Now, the bottles being empty are very lightweight and easy to manipulate. So when they tip over hitting here, they fall down and land horizontally. Now this labeler is originally intended for horizontal labeling. So instead of trying to further modify it and make it work in a vertical orientation, it was easier to just have the bottle fall down the way it was originally intended. Filling the conveyor is pretty fast. I just stick a bottle in each finger and we can usually get it filled in about five minutes. The batch is ready. So we'll turn it off. Always wear protection when we're near it because um, any splattering, stuff like that. We're doing a lot of filming today, so we're only doing one batch, whereas typically we'd be able to do two batches, which would be 400 bottles. So now that this is done, we need to bleed the lines. There's a little water in the lines from the previous rinse. So to do that, we're gonna take this here, rotate this, and open this up. Turn this up, this is the pump. So it's already gravity fed, but it's pumped as well. And now we're ready for production. The production line has started. You can see the bottles are moving down the conveyor. The labeler machine is running, coming through. That gets flipped up. We have our caps. The caps have a foil seal inside of them. So all you gotta do is cap that right up. I like to do quality control every few bottles to make sure that they're the right weight and then we'll pass them through. When we first went viral, I had just completed this in advance of launching the product. I didn't know it was gonna go as viral as it did, and we ended up selling 10,000 bottles in the first month. That's how I know that this can produce 10,000 bottles a month at mass capacity. We were working every single day. Whenever this is backed up, this box is designed to catch overflow bottles. So occasionally a bottle will come off and fall in there while that's still up. That's what that's designed to do, is collect the overflow. It's done filling and it moves to the next. Just over 30 gallons remaining. Now I've mentioned before, this assembly line runs completely off Arduinos. So if you look right here, we got one there. This one controls this conveyor line. 
as well as this fill solenoid right here. We have another one over here. This was one of the first Arduinos that controls these three valves. Now the purpose of these three valves is these are manual. So if I'm not running the conveyor line and I wanna put bottles underneath these three, I can fill them manually. It purely serves as a backup if we have a problem with this guy but we have a whole bunch of replacement parts, backup Arduinos. We have replacement sensors. Pretty much have everything here so that we, if anything were to go offline, I can usually repair it within five, 10 minutes. While the assembly line is running, I want to answer a question from the comments from a French automated plant operator. I thought this was a cool one. At your filling device, this right here, you set several nozzles to seemingly fill several bottles at the same time. I'm not sure you said why you don't do it, but here's my concern. Why not doing a kind of giant comb slash rake that would space and hold right below each nozzle evenly a set of bottles? Well, I'm glad you asked that because when we first started the assembly line, that's what it was. We actually had five filling nozzles here and, and five sets of solenoids that would close and hold them in position. What we ended up discovering is that it created more paths of failure. Uh, occasion, in the early setup, we would have a lot of different problems going wrong, and over the course of a couple months, we were able to streamline this setup. And what we discovered is by doing one filling valve, we mitigate 90% of the problems, and we're still able to do it at the same speed at which can keep up with this labeler. We decided to remove one of them and keep these three running on the old Arduino back here for a backup in case we were to ever have downtime on this, we could manually fill three bottles at a time. We haven't had to use it yet, but it's there in case we need it. We're getting down to the last few bottles. For those of you that don't know, we produce a product called Seat Reviver. And that is a marine mildew stain remover made for boats, as well as UV shield gel, which is a vinyl protectant and neutralizer made for boats. You apply that after you apply any mildew stain remover and it helps save the stitching in your boat seats and it protects and guards the vinyl against UV rays. And that's what we produced in the last two hours. This is what we produced yesterday. That is 300 bottles. This is going out in the morning. It's on a shipping cart. Uh, this will roll right out. So total, we have 500 bottles done in the last two days. We got two products with a third innovative product on the way. I can't talk about it yet, but like and subscribe and you'll certainly hear about it. Drop your questions in the comments. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on episode three.